now we are going to discuss uh, solution to some selected problems from chapter 9 of the book of mechanics of materials by F. P. Beer and Johnson the title of the chapter is deflection of beams so here I will solve some of the numerical problems from the exercise we will apply the methods solution methods which we have discussed in the theory part so on each problem I will apply one of the method which we have discussed so total we will discuss almost five problems in this lecture and rest of the problems can be attempted by the students and if you found any uh, difficulty you can discuss with me through my email or google classroom okay the first problem which I have selected for you guys is problem number 9.9 .9 from the exercise it is a triangular distribution of load there are two triangles uh, beam A B C which is a simply supported beam statement of the problem is knowing that the beam A B is a W10 cross 33 rolled steel shape a roll shape uh, W1033 we have to find moment of inertia of this beam from the appendix tables given at the end of the book okay uh, W0 load distributed load maximum W0 is 3 kilopounds per foot length is given in uh, in feet it is 12 feet we have to convert it uh, or may, we may be uh, yeah, we, we will need to convert it into inches because E is given in pounds per square inch so we have to convert all feet all feet into inches E is given as 29 to 10 power 6 pound per square inch and we have to determine slope at point A at this point we have to find slope theta so for this we will, need, we will need an expression of theta as a function of x so that we can put x equal to 0 and we will find theta a okay and deflection at c y c here y c will be actually y maximum as well because it is simply supported beam and load is uh, uh, symmetric for y c we will need y as a function of x this expression which is the equation of elastic curve and then we will put x equal to l by 2 in this expression to find y c so actually what do we need we need an expression of y as a function of x and an expression of theta as a function of x then we only need to put different values of x in these two expressions and we can find values of y and theta a okay <coughs> we can solve this problem using different methods the same problem has already been solved in the theory part it was an example problem and we solved it using uh, singularity methods singularity functions now I want to section this beam between A and C if I section this beam between A and C and find moment function as a function of x between A and C we only need a function between A and C because we need theta at A and y at C so a function between A and C is enough for us we will find function of moment and then we can apply the double differential expression and simply we will integrate this moment twice to find theta and phi okay so to determine this uh, moment between A and C first we need reaction at point A also at point B but it is not <coughs> reaction at boy, uh, point B, B will not be needed later we can find both of them let us find this it is a beam AB of total length L two triangular loads are there 
between AC and BC. First, if we find this whole load, the whole load W is area under these two triangles. So area under a single triangle is, okay, it is half of the length L by 2 between AC and L by 2. So load under one triangle is half into L by 2 into W naught. This is load under single triangle. So under two triangles it will be 2 into this load. So total W is W naught L by 2. This total load is supported by two reaction supports at A and B. So RA and RB will be same because it is symmetric loading. You can find RA and RB using laws of statics each R will be W naught L by 4 okay now I want to section this beam between point A and point C if I section this beam between point A and point C and I will redraw this beam below here is R A length of the beam is X here will be a shear force in a moment W at this point will be W A and it will be equal to W naught times X part of length L by 2 so it can be W A will be how I have written W A W naught is our maximum load we have taken only X portion of the length L by 2 so X divided by L by 2 length is taken multiplied by the maximum load W naught. So this much load is at this point W A. So w A is W naught 2 W naught X divided by L. Okay. What will be the moment here? Summation of moments is equal to 0 for section A C this point A summation of moments is equal to 0 let us suppose counterclockwise moments are 0 uh, are positive so you can do the calculations by yourself I will just strictly write moment equal to W naught L divided by 4x minus W naught X cube divided by 3 L okay how I have done it first I have converted this distributed load into a concentrated load which is equal to area under this triangle the distance of load from this point will be x by 3 so you can do it this moment function can be inserted into the double differential expression ei d square y by dx square is equal to function of moment 
function of moment is w naught l divided by 4 x minus w naught x cube divided by 3 l integrating this expression once it yields as e i theta is equal to w naught l divided by 8 x square minus w naught x power 4 divided by 12 l plus a constant of integration c1 let me call this expression as expression 1 integrating this expression again we get e i y equal to w naught l x cube divided by 24 minus w naught x power 5 divided by 60 l plus c1 x plus c2 let us call it equation number 2 we have to find c1 and c2 we have to use boundary conditions for c1 and c2 okay which boundary conditions we can use we can only use boundary conditions between a and c only because this expression of moment is for section a c only so at x equal to a at x equal to 0 at point a y is 0 because here is a pin support at point c what is the boundary condition at point c when the beam bends deflection will be maximum at point c if the deflection is maximum slope will be zero so at x equal to l by 2 theta is zero so we can use these two boundary conditions at x equal to zero y is zero at x equal to l by 2 theta is zero so let us put these two boundary conditions put x equal to 0 and y equal to 0 since it belongs to y so we have to put in equation number 2 because equation number 2 is related to y so by putting x equal to 0 and y equal to 0 in equation number 2 we can get c2 equal to 0 now put x equal to l by 2 and theta equal to 0 as discussed above this boundary condition is related to theta so we have to put in equation number 1 because equation 1 equation 1 is related to theta as well so we can get c1 equal to you can do the calculations c1 will be minus 5 w naught l cube divided by 192 putting c1 and c2 both back into equation number 1 and 2 we can get expression for theta and expression for y what we are needed is to find slope at a in part a okay before that we also need uh, value of i from appendix for beam w 10 cross 33 i will be let us go to the table mm. it is appendix c properties of rolled steel shape for w shapes 10 cross 33 because our beam is of this shape we have to find i along x axis usually we have to do it along x axis so along x axis this is along x axis and here our x axis is the same 
so w10 33 this is w10 33 so w10 33 here is ixx in inch power 4 it is 171 inches power 4 171 inch power 4 okay for theta a what we have to find is theta a theta a is at x equal to 0 so put for part a put x equal to 0 in equation 1 we have already found c1 as well in i also so we can find theta a you can do the calculations by yourself theta a will be minus 5 w naught l cube divided by 192 ei put i equal to 171 e equal to e is given here 29 to 10 power 6 l equal to 12 into 15 inches and w equal to 3 into 10 power 3 pounds divided by feet should be converted to inches divided by 12 this is w in pound per inch okay putting all these values in this expression theta a becomes numerical value will be minus 3.92 into 10 power minus 3 radius minus means this theta is this angle is clockwise if you do not want to write minus sign you can write it as 3.92 to 10 power minus 3 radians you can show it like this theta a clockwise okay at, for part b we have to find deflection at c deflection at c means y c so we have to put x equal to l by 2 in the expression of y put x equal to l by 2 in equation 2 we get yc which will be minus negative sign means it is downward w naught l power 4 divided by 120 if we put numerical values of w naught and uh, mm, w naught l power 4 divided by 120 ei it will be 120 EI okay so numerical value of YC will be minus 0 0.1806 inch the value is in minus but I am putting it putting here a downward sign so we do not need to put negative sign here either a downward sign or negative sign okay so this was solution of the problem we started with the function of moment and simply putting inserting the moment function into double differential equation and integrating it twice and then finding the unknown constant c1 and c2 using boundary conditions then for point a we have put x equal to 0 for point c we have put x equal to l by 2 in the corresponding expressions and we have found theta a and y c moving further to the next problem this was problem number 9.9 .9. okay moving further the next problem is problem number 
the statement of it is again a simply supported beam under a triangular distribution and a, a triangular distributed load and a concentrated load of 8 kN total length of the beam is 2 meter beam is S130 cross 15 for the beam and loading shown determine in part A slope at end A theta A at this end for theta A we need a function of theta and by putting x equal to 0 we can find theta A first we have to find this function then deflection at the midpoint C again at point C y c for this we need function of y y is a function of x and then by putting x equal to l by 2 we can find y c so we need this function we need function of theta and function of y again we can use the same method which we have employed in the previous uh, problem by sectioning the beam between a and c but we can we, I want to use actually another method method in this uh, problem and this time I want to use method of uh, sing singularity functions so let us solve this problem by using singularity functions before using singularity function we need at least this reaction force RA so the students can do it by themselves because it is from statics by applying it is a statically determinate beam so by applying the equilibrium equations you can find reaction at A it is problem number 948 first I will draw free body diagram here is a reaction at point A R A there is another reaction at point B R B downward triangular load till point C and then there is a concentrated load at point C by employing the equations of equilibrium you can find reaction at point A and point B simply I need actually reaction at point A so I will take moment at point B you can do it by yourself and it will be like minus 2 into R A plus 24 into 1 plus 2 by 3 24 is actually concentrated load which is at a distance of 2 by 3 from here 2 by 3 meter ok and then concentrated load 8 into distance 1 so RA becomes 24 kilo Newton upward positive means it is a point our direction is correct ok now I have to find moment function because I will put moment function is in this double differential expression and I will integrate it twice to find the moment expression I want to use singularity functions from singularity functions we can find load function shear function and moment function in some other problem you may be asked to find load and shear functions as well but in this method in this problem we have we, we have not been asked to find any load or shear function so directly I will find moment function okay for moment function this triangular load is not suitable as we have singularity functions for this kind of triangular load where load is 0 at the right end and it is maximum at the left end and it is maximum at the right end 
I have to change this load what I have to do I will draw this uh, beam again here here is a support RA okay this triangle this concentrated force 8 kilonewton I want to extend this triangle like this I want to make it a rectangle what I have done is I have added 48 kilonewton meter load here so I will add 48 kilonewton load here I have added 0 kilonewton here so I will add 0 kilonewton here and I will add a, an upward triangle this red color triangle is what I have added ok now it is balanced out so here it is 48 kilonewton per meter now this triangle and the upper rectangle are similar to the one given here but the right end should be closed we have seen the load is up till right end up till right end so we have to extend this load up till right end now this is a rectangle so I will extend this rectangle up to the right end here also I have to add up to the right end so it is 40 sorry this whole rectangle is now 48 kilonewton per meter ok 48 kilonewton per meter here it is 48 kilonewton per meter now the upper load is the, actually the uh, load above the beam is a downward load totally a triangular distribution now I will replace this whole as a red color triangular distribution uh, sorry rectangular distribution rectangular distribution of downward load equal to 48 kilonewton per meter below the beam it is, here is an upward load of triangular distribution and then a rectangular distribution we cannot solve this load it should be actually up till end should be like this using the same slope I have added another triangle here so now I will add here as well a triangle at this point I have added zero load so here I have added zero load at this point I have added 48 kilonewton per meter because now it is 96 kilonewton per meter total so we do not need this load now ok here it is this triangle is actually I will make it in black color above the beam we have one red color rectangle and in black color a triangle below the beam we have a total triangle now so 
so totally we have three loads one rectangle above the beam one triangle above the beam and one triangle below the beam this triangle has actually uh, 48 kilonewton per meter load why it is 48 kilonewton per meter why not 96 because because we have added a triangle here from 0 to 48 so it is from 0 to 48 okay we will write a moment function for these three loads uh, for, for these three distributed loads one triangular distribution uh, one rectangular distribution and two triangular distribution and one concentrated load of air kilonewton and one concentrated load RA RA is actually 24 kilonewton so let us write uh, moment function for these loads first of all for this reaction support RA let us see for concentrated load moment function is minus p x minus a power 1 it is downward so our reaction support is upward I will use a positive sign x minus a power 1 so here will be plus 24 into x minus 0 power 1 x minus 0 power 1 is actually x okay then for this concentrated load 8 kilonewton I will use again the same minus p x minus a power 1 it will be minus 8 x minus 1 power 1 then for the triangular distribution this triangular distribution it is 48 kilonewton per meter for downward triangle downward load triangular distribution this one moment function is minus 1 over 2 w naught x minus a power 2 minus 1 over 2 48 minus 1 over 2 into 48 will be minus 24 x minus a power 2 so x minus 0 power 2 will be x minus 0 power 2 will be x square okay for this triangle triangle above the beam triangle above the beam load is downward in this case it is minus k divided by 6 minus k divided by 2 into 3 is 6 minus k divided by 6 into x minus a power 3 k is actually slope of the load so minus k by 6 into x minus a power 3 slope of this triangle above the beam it is 48 divided by 48 itself so minus 48 divided by 6 minus 48 divided by 6 will be 8 8 48 divided by 6 is 8 into x minus a power 3 so x minus 1 power 3 okay for this triangle below the beam and upward load slope of this triangle is 96 divided by 2 again 48 96 divided by 2 is 48 singularity function is 
for downward load downward load it is minus uh, uh, sorry for positive slope it is minus k divided by 6 so for negative slope it will be plus k divided by 6 so plus 48 divided by 6 plus 48 divided by 6 it becomes plus 8 into x minus 0 power 3 x minus 0 power 3 will be x cube so the functions become I will rewrite this function here simply I will put this function in the double differential expression e i into d square y by dx square I will write this function as 24 x minus 24 x square plus 8 x cube minus 8 into x minus 1 power 3 minus 8 into x minus 1 power 1 we will integrate this function once it will be e i theta equal to 12 x square minus 8 x cube plus 2 x power 4 minus 2 into x minus 1 power 4 minus 4 into x minus 1 power 2 plus c1 let us call this expression number 1 integrating this expression once more e i y will be 4 x cube minus 2 x power 4 plus 2 by 5 x power 5 minus 2 by 5 x minus 1 power 5 minus 4 by 3 x minus 1 power 3 plus c 1 x plus c 2 let us call this expression number 2 to find c 1 and c 2 we have to put boundary conditions in these two expressions expression number 1 and expression number 2 the boundary conditions are at x equal to 0 y is 0 this being at x equal to 0 y is 0 at x equal to l y is 0 at x uh, for all uh, for all simply supported beams we have these two boundary conditions at x equal to 0 y is 0 put in expression 2 because it is related to y so we have to put in equation equation of y put this in equation number 2 we get c2 equal to 0 then put x equal to l and y equal to 0 in equation number 2 again we can get c1 equal to minus 5.53 kilonewton meter square how we have found it minus 5.53 we have already put E and I into the expression E is E is given I can be found from the appendix table for S130 into 15 the students can do this by themselves I am putting it directly here our final answer will be C1 equal to minus 5.53 kilonewton meter square okay now putting c1 and c2 back into expression number one and expression number two 
add uh, for in part a we, we have been asked to find theta a so for theta a put x equal to 0 in expression of theta put x equal to 0 in equation 1 by putting x equal to 0 in equation 1 we can see this term will be negative and also this term will be negative 0 minus 1 0 minus 1. so we can neglect these two terms because in singularity functions the negative terms are neglected they are equal to 0 so remember this put uh, by putting x equal to 0 in equation 1 these two terms will be 0 so I will directly write here theta a becomes minus 5.45 into 10 power minus 3 radians you can either put this negative sign or you can write a clockwise direction here okay for part b in part b <coughs> we needed to find deflection at point c so we have to put x equal to l by 2 in the expression of y put x equal to l by 2 in equation 2 and by putting x equal to l by 2 l by 2 means what is length sorry l by 2 means 1 so we, put, we will put x equal to 1 actually put x equal to 1 in equation 2 when we put x equal to 1 in equation 2 this term will be 0 this term will be 0 because 1 minus 1 is 0 so by putting x equal to 1 in expression 2 we can find y at point c which will be minus 3.09 into 10 power minus 3 meter the negative sign means it is downward deflection you can either use a downward sign or you can use a negative sign so this was problem number 948 what we have done again we have used this double differential expression but we have found expression of moment function of moment using singularity functions so you can do it by yourself again this singularity function has been integrated twice to find expression of theta and y and then by putting boundary conditions we found c1 and c2 for x equal to 0 we found theta a and for x equal to l by 2 or x equal to 1 we, we have found yc Moving further, the next problem which I have selected is problem number 9.83. Okay, the problem statement is for the beam shown, determine the reaction at support B. This is a statically indeterminate beam because both ends A and B are fixed so there are three reactions at both points uh, at both point A and point B so we have to apply some methods uh, because this beam cannot be solved using equations of equilibrium alone so we have to actually divide this beam into two parts first I will divide this beam exactly at point C so this beam can be split into two parts like this here will be a downward shear force and a moment and here it will be an upward shear force and moment
exact at point C the beam has been split into two parts so we have two beams AC and BC <coughs> and AC we have a downward moment uh, shear force at point C and a counterclockwise moment in portion BC we have a upward shear force and a uh, clockwise moment remember that at point C the shear force in beam AC and shear force in beam BC must be same just the directions are opposite similarly the moment at point C in beam AC must be equal to the moment at point C in beam BC just the directions are opposite so numerical values will be same so we have to find uh, this shear force in beam AC and shear force in beam BC and then we can equate them similarly we can find moment in beam AC and moment in beam BC and then we can equate them so we can get two equations from these two conditions okay let me move to the notepad problem number 983 I will split the beam AC here is VC and moment <coughs> HC <coughs> okay length of the beam is L by 2 similarly for this beam BC we have an upward force VC a moment MC and a distributed load downward equal to W per unit length we can find deflection and slope in these two beams For, for beam AC we can find deflection and uh, slope for beam AC at point C from tables it is a cantilever beam with a concentrated force VC at the free end and similarly a bending moment at uh, free end so we can find a Y for the beam at point C <coughs> point C at point C the Y is due to this force VC and this moment MC so due to force VC we can move to the book and we can find the relevant table the relevant table may be appendix number D okay for a beam for a cantilever beam with a concentrated load at the end it is case number one deflection at the free end this maximum deflection is at the free end it is equal to PL cube divided by 3 EI in our case length is equal to L by 2 so put L equal to L by 2 and our force P is equal to VC so by putting P equal to VC and L equal to L by 2 we can find this Y it will be minus VC into L by 2 cube divided by 3 EI so I will put it here minus VC L by 2 cube divided by 3i okay due to moment here is the case a uh, cantilever beam with moment at the end this moment is actually um, counterclockwise and it is bending the beam downward 
but in our case the moment mc in this beam it is bending the beam upward so we will use a positive sign instead of negative sign in this expression it will be positive for us ml square divided by ei m is our in our case is mc length in our case is l by 2 so we will put l equal to l by 2 in this expression and simply we will write it here with a positive sign because our beam is bending upward due to this moment due to v it was bending downward so i have used negative sign due to moment mc it is bending upward so i will use a positive sign it will be mc into l by 2 square divided by 2 ei simplifying this expression we can write mc l square divided by 8 ei minus vc l cube divided by 24 ei okay now theta at point c slope at point c in beam ac okay again a can uh, cantilever beam with a concentrated load at po at the free end case one here is slope put l equal to l by 2 and force equal to vc again in this case the rotation is counterclockwise sorry uh, clockwise so they have used negative sign in our case also it is clockwise so we will use negative sign vc into l by 2 square divided by 2 ei okay due to moment so, sorry we will use negative sign due to moment uh, due to our moment the rotation is counterclockwise here in this case due to moment the rotation is clockwise so they have used negative sign our case it is counterclockwise so we will use positive sign and we will use l equal to l by 2 so we will write this expression plus mc into l by 2 divided by ei <coughs> rearranging this expression we can write it as mc l divided by 2 ei minus vc l cube divided by 8 ei similarly for portion bc of the beam <coughs> for portion bc let us find yc first portion bc is under three kinds of loads one is a distributed load w downward another is a, sh uh, a concentrated force vc upward and the third one is a bending moment mc clockwise so we will write three functions for three uh, three parts for this um, uh, deflection and slope functions for deflection of the beam cantilever beam under moment in this case again <coughs> okay we will again for portion bc length is l by 2 rest of the things are same this moment is producing a downward deflection minus ml square divided by 2i in our case this moment is producing an upward deflection so we will use a positive sign and i will directly write the function here mc l by 2 square divided by 2 ei 
okay due to the upward concentrated load vc it is similar to case number one here the load is downward deflection is minus plq divided by 3i over case v is upward it is producing an upward deflection so we will use positive sign and again we will use length equal to l by 2 and load equal to vc so it will be plus vc into l by 2 cube divided by 3 ei okay due to load w our beam is bending downward deflection is downward here also in case number 2 it is a uniformly distributed load on a cantilever beam deflection is, is case number 2 it is case number 2 deflection is downward with negative sign w l power 4 divided by 8 ei so we will use l equal to l by 2 rest of the things are same so <coughs> Here it will be minus W L by 2 power 4 divided by 8 EI. Simplify this expression. <coughs> it will be MC L square divided by Eight EI plus VC L cube divided by twenty four EI minus W L power four divided by one twenty eight EI. This is YC do uh, in portion. BC of the beam similarly theta C I will write directly the function of theta C you can do it for the three types of loads uh, distributed load W concentrated load VC and counter uh, clockwise moment MC from the table I will write it directly I have done it it is equal to minus just remember that in case of uh, deflection if the downward deflection is negative upward will be positive in case of slope if the counter if the clockwise slope is negative in the table and our uh, if the if our slope is counterclockwise it will be positive if the if it is clockwise it will be negative so it doesn't depend upon upward or downward load or clockwise or counterclockwise moment it depends upon downward or upward deflection similarly clockwise or counterclockwise moment so theta c is minus m l divided by 2 ei minus v c l cube divided by 8 ei plus w l cube divided by 48 ei <coughs> so we have found yc and theta c for beam ac and yc and theta c for beam bc okay so yc for both the beams must be same similarly theta c for both the beams must be same same because point c is common in both the sections ac and bc so deflection at c will be same in both the sections similarly slope at c will be same in both the sections so put yc for section ac equal to yc for section bc also put theta c for section ac equal to theta c for section bc and we have the expressions for yc and theta c by comparing these expressions we can find vc and mc 
these are two expressions you can solve them simultaneously <coughs> and find vc and mc i will write here vc becomes 3 by 32 wl and mc becomes 1 by 48 w l square now we have value of vc and mc if, if we put if we use any of these beams either section ac or section bc knowing vc and mc we can find unknown reactions at a and b in the problem we have been asked to find reaction at point b or b so we will use section bc of the beam here we have rb bx moment at b is a downward load w here is vc here is mc so we know vc we know mc and we can find RB, <coughs> MB and BX. So BX is definitely zero. Use equations of equilibrium. Summation of FX is equal to zero. So BX is zero. summation of fy equal to 0 so we can find rb equal to 13 by 32 wl it is upward positive you can do the calculations by yourself summation of moment equal to 0 at any point you can take moment for example <coughs> you can take moment at point c equal to 0 and take clockwise moment positive we can find mb equal to 111 by 192 wl square and this beam is clockwise it is positive clockwise what we have done is we have split the beam into two beams we have sectioned the beam exactly at point C knowing that it has half length SC L by 2 and BC equal to L by 2 both the beams are cantilever beams <coughs> at uh, point C and beam AC shear force is downward moment is counterclockwise by convention similarly in part BC uh, at point C shear force is upward and moment is clockwise from the tables we have found at point C YC and theta C for beam AC similarly YC and theta C for beam BC AC is under two kinds of load uh, a, a concentrated force VC and a counterclockwise moment MC. VC is under three types of loads a concentrated force VC, a clockwise moment MC, and a distributed load W. By equating YC for, the, for both the beams AC and BC, and similarly theta C for both the beams AC and BC, and solving the equations simultaneously, we have found VC and MC. By using values of VC and MC which are known now in section BC it is a cantilever beam <coughs> three unknowns 
R B B X and M B can be find uh, can be found using equations of equilibrium. So we have used equations of equilibrium. We have found B X R B and M B. You can do the calculations by yourself. Now we will move to our next problem. Problem which I have selected is problem number. 104 9.104 the problem states is for the cantilever beam and loading shown determine the slope at point a slope at point a is actually theta a and part b is to determine the deflection at point a it is y at point a e is given 200 gigapascal beam is w250 cross 22.3 so we can find value of i from the tables uh, i will write it here it is 28.7 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4 or you can write 28.7 into 10 power minus 6 meter power 4 I have converted into it into meter again uh, we can solve this problem using different methods for example we can use singularity method or we can use a method of superposition we can use uh, we can section the beam but I want to use uh, moment area theorem on this problem because uh, we have already applied the other methods on different problems earlier to apply it moment area theorem uh, using first moment area theorem we can find slope and using second moment area theorem we can find deflection we need a reference point or a reference tangent so at point c theta is zero you must remember it and the beam will be the slope will be zero at uh, point c the, po the tangent at point c will be straight line so point c is our reference tangent point uh, for moment area theorem okay we will divide this beam into two types of uh, beams one with a distributed load only and the other one with the concentrated load at the end concentrated load of 5 kN distributed load of 4 kN per meter and then we will solve it by parts and we will draw bending moment diagram for both the beams then M over EI diagrams for both the beams so let us do it first the given beam is problem number 9.104 the given beam is a cantilever beam with the right end fixed and there is a distributed load 4 kN per meter and then there is a okay it is at a distance of 2.5 from point C and then concentrated load of 5 kN it's point A point B point C distance between A and B is 1 meter between B and C is 2.5 meter I split this beam into two beams cantilever beam with distributed load between point B and point C four kilonewton per meter plus a cantilever beam. We have used method of superposition to split this beam into two types of loadings 
this sun is under a cancer uh, under a concentrated load of 5 kN at a distance of 3.5 meter okay now we can draw moment diagrams for both of these beams before that we need to draw a shear force diagram because we cannot directly draw a bending moment diagram for shear force um, because at the end A there is no force so there will be zero shear force and it will be it will be zero shear force at point A and it will be zero until point P because there is no force between A and B then there is a distributed load of 4 kN per meter so 4 kN multiplied by 2.5 because it is a rectangular uh, distribution uh, uniform distribution so area under a rectangle is width into height so 2.5 into 4 is 10 kN the load is downward so it is minus 10 minus 10 kN and I will write, not write kilonewton here I will write it as shear force is current since it is a uniformly distributed load so it will be a linear line similarly a shear force diagram for this beam will be at this end A there is a downward load of 5 kN so we have minus 5 kN shear force and then since it is a concentrated load until point C there is no other load so it will remain constant until point C ok now moving forward we will draw a bending moment diagram kilo newton meters ok <coughs> since shear force is 0 here so bending moment is from zero, 0 from point A to point B so area under this curve is 0 so bending moment will be 0 as it is 0 at free end and it will be 0 until point B then 0 plus area under this curve area under this curve it is a uh, triangle so area under this curve is 1 over 2 into 10 into 2.5 1 over 2 into 10 into 2.5 becomes minus 12.5 so here I will write minus 12.5 and since it is a linear uh, the, the shear force is a linear line so it will be a quadratic line moment will be a quadratic line ok similarly for this beam bending moment is 0 at this end because there is no bending moment at and A ok area under the shear curve is minus 5 into 3.5 minus 5 into 3.5 it becomes 17.5 minus 17.5 ok so here it will be 0 minus 17.5 becomes minus 17.5 since the shear force is constant so bending moment will be linear now we have to draw moment over EI M over EI diagram 
So M over EI diagram will be simply the moment diagram divided by value of EI. What is EI? We have already calculated I from the table which is 28.7 into 10 power minus 6 meter power 4 and E is 200 into 10 power 6 uh, 10 power 9 Pascals so we can find EI over EI will be if you can uh, multiply E and I it will be 5740 kilo Newton meter square it will be 547 uh, 5740 into 10 power 3 Newton meter square so we can write it 5740 kilonewton meter square so we will directly divide the values of moment by EI we can draw M over EI diagrams zero divided by 5740 is again zero so until this point between A and B it is 0 and then minus 12.5 uh, divided by 5740 becomes 2.18 into 10 power minus 3 and we can join these two points with a parabolic curve the curve will remain same just the numerical values have changed there is no unit as it is newton meter square kilonewton meters uh, sorry uh, per meter it is per meter unit is per meter okay kilonewton meter divided by kilonewton meter square will be per meter Similarly, for this being M over EI zero divided by five seven four zero five seven four zero over EI zero divided by five seven four zero is zero and seventeen point five divided by five seven four zero is 3.04 into 10 power minus 3 3.04 into 10 power minus 3 per meter since the moment diagram is straight line so it will also be straight line m and m or ei diagrams have only the difference of numerical values all other all of the other things are same we are just dividing moment by a scalar number so the diagram shape will be same these are negative values okay if we call it area 1 and this is area 2 we can find area 1 and area 2 area 2 will be okay it is a parabola so 1 over 3 into high uh, into uh, base into height base is 2.5 this length is 2.5 and height is minus 2.18 into 10 power minus 3 so area becomes area 2 becomes minus 1.8 1 5 into 10 power minus 3 similarly area 1 will be area of a triangle 1 over 2 into base is 3.5 this whole length is 3.5 from point A to point C you can see it is 3.5 okay multiplied by minus 3.04 into 10 power minus 3 so area 1 becomes 
माइनस फाइव पॉइंट डबल थ्री इंटू टेन पावर माइनस थ्री सिमिलरली डिस्टेंस ऑफ ईच एरिया डिस्टेंस ऑफ द सेंट्रॉइड ऑफ ईच एरिया फ्रॉम पॉइंट ए हेयर इज पॉइंट ए और वी कैन से द राइट सॉरी द लेफ्ट एंड ऑफ द बीम ए Why I am find distance distance from point A because we need to find deflection and slope at point A. So for point A we have to find distance of area uh, centroid of each area from point A. For parabola, parabolic curve. For example, here is a centroid. This is. x2 and here for triangle distance of centroid is x1 okay for uh, for parabola this distance is sum of two distances this distance is already known 1 meter and This will be three by four into base. Three by four into two point five. You can see formula for parabola uh, for area under a parabola to calculate its uh, distance from its uh, centroid. Similarly, for triangle, distance from centroid can be calculated as. Two by three into base. So base is three point five. So x two is one plus three by four into two point five, which becomes two point eight seven five meters. X one is two by three into three point five. It is two point double three meters. Okay. Now to find theta at a. Theta a minus theta c is theta a c. This is first moment area theorem. We know that theta c is zero. Why theta c is zero? Because c is fixed point. We can see in the beam, main beam, c is fixed, so theta c is zero. So we know that theta a c is actually theta a. Theta c is zero. So theta a is equal to theta a c, and theta a c is area under the M over E I diagram between point A and point. C. So between point A and point C, we have two areas: area A1 and A2. Because we have divided the beam into two types of loads: concentrated load and a distributed load. So it is simply a sum of A1 plus A2. So you can add these two areas: A2 and A1. It will be minus 7.15. Into ten power minus three radius. Okay. Similarly, y a. It will be tangential deviation of a with respect to c. Why with respect to c? Because c is our reference point. At c, the tangent is a horizontal line. So we have taken c as our reference point. C has zero deflection actually, so tangential deviation between A and C will be sum of product sum of the products of areas and their distances uh, and the distance of their uh, centroids from point A. Yes. This is second moment area theorem. So. Y A will be. We can put values of A one, X one, A two, and X two. So the final value will be 
uh, these areas are in negative so it will be minus 17 point six three into 10 power minus 3 meters either we will put a negative sign or a down, downward sign here so we have calculated y a and theta a which were required in the problem theta a was required in part 1 and y a was required in part 2 of the problem we have simply divided the beam into two beams each of a single type of load beam 1 with a distributed load and beam 2 with a, dis with a concentrated load and we have drawn moment shear force bending moment and m over ei diagrams of each beam we have found areas under the curve of m over ei diagram and distances of the centroid of each area from point a simply the sum of each area is theta a each area from point a to point c because c is our reference point and then sum of the product of areas and their distance uh, and the distance of their centroids from point a is second moment area theorem which is equal to y a you can you can also directly uh, draw bending moment diagram for this beam without dividing it into parts you can do it but i think dividing it into parts is easier and we can get simple areas like a triangle or a parabola area under a parabola so we can apply moment area theorems to find slopes and deflection we will solve one more problem with the same method moment area method as problem number 106 from chapter number 9 for the cantilever beam and loading shown determine the deflection and slope at point at n a caused by the moment m naught at this point n a we have to find slope and deflection we can use uh, moment area theorem again if we can if we see here the beam has a does not have a, cro uh, con uh, a constant cross section cross section is changing e over uh, ei value is e is constant because the material is same but i is changing constantly so between point a and b the beam has ei value then it is 2 ei and then is 3 ei we will employ the moment area theorem to solve this problem it is very easy to solve using moment area theorem what we can do is this problem number 106 okay the beam is a cantilever beam it is divided into three segments with EI, 2 EI and 3 EI cross sections length of each section is equal to A there is a clockwise moment M0 at NA of the beam let us see this one is NA then there is a point B, C D. okay now we have to draw a moment diagram for this beam as moment is there is no shear force in this beam because there is no applied force at n a the shear force will be zero between a and d moment will be at this end moment at n a is m naught moment is m naught and then this moment is constant between a and d there is no other moment or no other force so moment is constant between a and d which is m naught 
now we can divide this moment over EI If we divide moment over EI for the first part of the beam, length A, so it will be M over EI. It should be M naught over EI. Okay, then for second part of the beam between B and C, the moment will be divided over 2 EI, so it will be M naught over 2 EI. M naught over 2 EI. Then third part of the beam is divided again by 3 EI, so it will be M naught over 3 EI. All these three areas are rectangles. Why they are rectangles? Because the main moment is a rectangular area, but each part of length A is divided by a different number EI, 2 EI and 3 EI. The one divided by a higher number will be a smaller area. The one divided by a greater number, uh, sorry, the one divided by a greater number will be a smaller area. The one with divided by a smaller number will be a greater area. So this is M or EI diagram which has three areas A1, A2 and A3. So A1 is equal to M over EI is height of the triangle divided uh, multiplied by length is A. So A1 is M naught over EI into A. A2 is M naught divided by 2 EI into A. A3 is M naught divided by 3 EI into A. Each area is a triangle which can be calculated using uh, by multiplying the width and the height of the triangle. So width and height. Width of each triangle is A. This is A. This is A. This is A. And height of each triangle is different. M or EI, M or 2I, EI and M or 3EI. Okay. Now, we have to find slope at A and deflection at A. Since this beam is fixed at point D, so the beam will deflect like this upward because the moment is clockwise. There is zero slope at point D and the beam has a straight line as uh, the, the, the slope of the curve at point D is a straight line. So point D is our reference point. We will take, we will here to find theta A. So theta A minus theta D is theta AD. Since theta D is zero, so theta A is equal to theta AD. Theta AD is sum of uh, the areas between point A and point D. Some area, some of areas between point A and point D are A1 plus A2 plus A3. So their sum can be found, can be found. is eleven M not A divided by six EI. This is theta A. Okay, it is clockwise, so we have to write it is clockwise. Okay. Now for y a we need sum of the products of 
areas and the distance of their centroids from point A. Areas are, are already known. We have to find distances of their centroids from point A delete this text okay distance of centroid of area 1 from point A is simply A by 2 distance of this is x1 distance of centroid of area 2 from A1 is x2 which is a plus A by 2 distance of centroid of area 3 from point A is 2A plus A by 2 ok so we will put all the values in this expression and we can simplify it you can do the simplifications by yourself I will directly write here y a equal to 25 m naught a square divided by 12 ei and it will be upward because the moment is clockwise so you can see the beam will bend upward you can guess it by yourself this was what was required in the problem statement we were asked to find deflection at a and slope at a slope under uh, m or ei uh, slope is actually a sum of the areas under m or ei diagram so we have plotted m or ei diagram and we have added all the areas to find slope and then deflection is sum of the product of a each area and its and distance of its centroid from the point for which we, we want to find the deflection in this case it is point A so A1 x1, A2 x2, A3 x3 and we have added them and we have found YA deflection at point A this was all I wanted to discuss these six problems problem number 9.9 9.48 9.83 9.104 and 9.106 we have employed we have sectioned the beams uh, to find uh, slope and deflection we have employed the uh, singularity functions we have uh, we have uh, used the superposition methods and we have used uh, the moment area uh, methods to find slope and deflection in each of the problem so i hope you can understand all of these methods now you are advised to practice more and more problems with different methods and to learn uh, you, you, so that you can learn the application of these methods and you can solve problems using various methods you are also advised to solve one problem with different methods so that uh, the answer should be same so that you can understand how to apply a method a solution method to a specific problem so i hope it is enough uh, you can discuss the solutions with me or you can discuss other problems with me on my email which is given on my website Thank you.